I'm Mr. Bart Suttoth, and they call me Mr. Bart. I'm associated with the 100 Scholars Robotic Alliance. That's the Project Success Program, the 100 Black Men of Atlanta. Several years ago, um, I was doing some lessons with a group of students, telling them what their future would be. Reading Rockets and Robots was the title of the lessons. That lesson occurred in August, and little did I know that in February, someone would come to us and say, would your kids be able to build this robot? There's an organization called FIRST that has robotic competitions. So the future came true. We were introduced by Dr. Lonnie Johnson of uh, Johnson Research and Development. We were given an opportunity to come to the Georgia Dome as a student journalism team to see what this thing FIRST was and we came over with three young men who had the assignment of doing interviews and meeting students from other places in the United States. Little did we know they would meet students from all over the world. And as we walked away, I asked the students, uh, do you think we could do this? And one young man said, sure, Mr. Bart, we can do it. We can get a team. And uh, so that young man and I, the next year, started a first VEX team. And several years later, he was a senior we ended up winning the Rookie All-Star Award uh, at the Peachtree Regional and here at the Georgia Dome. So that young man, his vision of who we were and the opportunity from Dr. Lonnie Johnson opened this beautiful door called FIRST for me. I consider myself an extremely blessed individual in the sense that I've been mentored by so many men, my dad, my uncles. All through my life there have been men majority of people of men have to think back and realize there were females also. Uh, the reality is it doesn't take much to be a mentor and I've had so many mentors uh, I can start naming people and I get upset with or somebody's gonna get upset with me for not naming them but as far as this program is concerned um, first Lonnie Johnson, uh, Ray Singer, uh, Ed Barker, just go on and on with people who took some time not to tell me about how it was for them but to work with me on some of my objectives. Mentor, that word has different meanings to different people and I have just realized that it's not about people telling me or coming to me and spending time with me telling me about how it was when they were young or how they did it. It's working with me to see what I'm doing engaging me, finding out who I am, and then helping me do something. And that's a place where I think FIRST has transformed my concept of mentoring. FIRST allows people an opportunity to work with young people on projects that the young people are interested in. And it'll engage old people also. But the number of mentors I've had is, un I can't count the number of mentors. And that's one of the big reasons I'm so serious about the idea that we've got to continue getting more and more men involved, I use that term men to mean all of us, involved in mentoring. I think back to my father, my uncles, and constantly taking us to doors that they hadn't gone through and asking us, are you interested in going through that door? Are you interested in trying this? What do you think about this? And once they found out we were interested in something, walking alongside of us. So my dad and my mother's brother-in-laws, uncles, people that were just ordinary guys. Uh, I grew up in a community in North Carolina where uh, everyone was a mentor. If you went down the street, Mr. Bob was going to tell you, comb your hair. If you went to the next corner, Mr. Boss was going to ask you about, how are your grades? Read this for me. People who would ask you what you're doing, take some time with you, show an interest in what I was doing, and then encourage me or guide me. Any of the skill sets that they possessed that went along with what I was doing, they were always willing to provide something for me. So again, the mentors are uh, have been a numerous and, 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 and at this point they're constant. Seems like we're in a, 
a mentor to mentor relationship. I work along with the men of the 100 Black Men Chapter Atlanta, and they have been gracious to allow a guy named Mr. Bart to work with their children. Now from that, we've been able to get more of those men who, when you ask them about robotics, oh, I don't know anything about robotics. But if you ask them if they were, would be able to, to just help a young person with a little challenge, uh, what, what is the challenge? Immediately they ask the question, what is the challenge? But the idea of mentoring is something that is simple every day, but it's still complex in the sense that we don't do enough of it. We need mentors. There are several national campaigns that I'm aware of that are recruiting mentors. Very simple. Uh, this guy, Mr. Bart, is a mentor. If he can do it, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, the reality that uh, this is about us tomorrow and it starts today. And mentoring just takes somebody to have a little bit of time to just take a look at a young person and relate to that young person just for a few minutes. And the hook is made. The mentor gets hooked with the young person. So my challenge is drop the excuses, men, women, drop the excuses. Uh, I can't is a cuss word. Don't curse, say you can. And if you just try it, and one of the things about mentoring that I've seen, all the attempts that are made, uh, Lonnie Johnson, Dr. Johnson, as a, a great inventor, uh, puts himself on the level with Dean Kamen in terms of his inventing skill sets. But he gives Dean Kamen enormous credit about inventing this game, the genius of inventing a game that allows people mentors, men from all walks of life. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be a computer scientist. If you take a little time with these young people, they're the engineers, they're the computer scientists, but they need people to stand alongside them. They need people to be behind them and encourage them. And the role of mentors is one, I think, that we allow ourselves to have too many excuses about. Drop the excuses and say, I can. And that is what I would challenge men of Omega, Kappa Psi Phi, great fraternities. I will say any chapter of any organization, if your creed says you work with young people, you could do better. You could mentor. Uh, Colin Powell, uh, George Bush, all of the men that I look up to who've encouraged mentoring here in the United States, that's real. Uh, and it's a great reward internally, intrinsically, for anybody that does it. To have these young people go from kids who don't know what engineering is to recognize that they can build, they can figure things out, they can conceptualize, then ultimately find themselves accepted at a college as a mechanical engineering student in four years, you can't beat that. It's a whole lot better than just helping a kid put a ball in a basket. So I would just challenge all the people I know and don't know to give it a try. First is a, uh, an excellent spot to start with mentoring. Ah, uh, it's very difficult to say what's most rewarding. I, I think without a doubt, occasionally I'll hear my sons introduce me to their friends and, hey, this is my, bad, my dad, this is Pop, and Pop mentors these kids in Atlanta. He helps these kids learn how to, when I hear my sons telling about what I've done, that's pretty rewarding. Here, uh, some of the kids, but, when these young boys come to you with an acceptance letter, ah, that's something, something special. When they've been accepted to a college that they didn't know existed, and their futures are enlightened, their perspectives are enriched. These kids that didn't know what Southern Polytechnical Institute was four years ago are proud about saying they go to Southern Polytech and they're not even there yet. So hey, that's been pretty rewarding, having a couple of kids get into Southern Poly, a young man going to Tuskegee, a young man at Emory Riddle, 
So having four young boys put in programs that are going to make America better, make the world better, that's a pretty rewarding situation. Excuse me. Uh, allergies. This has been an amazing experience for me. Education, learning. We started out with a couple of VEX kits and here was an observation. The boys would tend to do all the building and push the ladies, young ladies aside. Uh, so, well, come on and try to be on. Well, he's, he's trying to take over. What we did, we tried something. We bought a couple more kits and ultimately we started two first tech teams, not an all-male team and another all-male team. We said we'd have a female team. The young ladies outdid the young men. So our observation showed us that typically the guys are going to try to be macho, but in reality the, the young ladies had more brain power, more focus, uh, their leadership skills. Uh, they've outdone our young men in most of the categories. I, I regret saying it, but it showed these young people that the way you typically look at a female, males, young men, is wrong. It's really wrong. And if you realize that that young lady is more than beauty, she's brains before she's beauty, she has abilities that you don't realize that her abilities can help you as, as opposed to just take you off on this fantasy, fantasy idea about who a woman is. And our young ladies who have worked with us have done exceptionally well. They've been accepted into uh, medical programs, uh, legal programs. Uh, we've got one at, uh, who's enrolled in a, a pre-med program and she started building robots. She got an opportunity to work with a cardiologist and uh, one of the Da Vinci robots uh, doing a simulation of a uh, bypass procedure using the machine and she was just transformed. She brought other young ladies. So the idea that girls can is a reality and it's just a matter of them coming to the water, they will drink, they will swim and, they, and they'll do it as good most of the time, probably better than the young men we've seen. So it's just about giving them the opportunity. And I'm very fortunate in the sense that our leadership has allowed me to, to develop two all-female teams, and it, for one in our Lego and one in our first tech project. And I believe if we had the dollars, <laughs> we could probably do an all-female FRC program because there's no doubt about it. Uh, the woman that I knew when I was a, a young boy um, isn't the sh same young lady that exists now. Our young ladies have the ability to, to do things way beyond what we typically conceived them being able to do. And one good thing about FIRST, again, is it provides that opportunity for young ladies to do it. They can build, they can design, they can program, and they can do things that have never been done before. So guys, take another look at her.